So I wanted to give a physical representation of what I was talking about earlier regarding the earliest manuscripts in Romans 9.5. Uh, you know, if Paul was referring to Christ as God, as Theos, or if he was uh, referring to God the Father in some form of doxology. And so what we have here is Papyrus 46, P46, and it dates from around the year 175 AD to around 225 AD. And it's the earliest, one of the earliest manuscripts we have for Romans. And in that big rectangle, red rectangle, is actually Romans 9 to 5. I know it's really hard to read, um, but uh, I try to color correct and bring out some of the ink on the lettering, but uh, that's Romans 9.5. In the very center, uh, in that smaller red box, is the word Theos, or God, and it's in what's called the Nomina Sacra, or sacred name, and often uh, for certain words, words like Jesus, or words like Christ, or Lord, or God, what they would do is they would take the first letter and the last letter, and they would bring them together and uh, abbreviate it and put a line over the top, and that's exactly what we have here. Uh, so this is one of the earliest manuscripts. Again, hard to see, uh, but I wanted to kind of show you know what what it looks like all with lettering, with the spacing, and with the lack of punctuation. Our next manuscript is Codex. Wow, look at that man, beautiful Codex Vaticanus. That lettering looks like a font. Um, Codex Vaticanus comes around the fourth century, early 300 a little bit after maybe AD. And uh, again, what we see here, all caps, no spacing, and really no punctuation. And see right there is our Nomina Sacra, that's Theos. Uh, it's a lot easier to see here. And then we have, there's another one right there, Christos, that's Christ. And so that's uh, another Nomina Sacra. Uh, right here, uh, you guys guess what that is? It's Amen, Amen, Amen is what we get, but that's what it looks like in Greek in all caps. And again, so Codex Vaticanus, just a beautiful manuscript. Um, it gives us kind of, again, another look at what it looks like with, with the lack of punctuation. Uh, this is Codex Sinaiticus, again, for early fourth century, like Codex Vaticanus. There's our Nomina Sacra right there. Uh, what's interesting, this is interesting, right? Um, imagine having a book, right? And having to be in all caps, no punctuation, and no, and no spaces, right? This is kind of what it's like. And uh, right, there's no hyphens either, right? But if you take a look, this letter right there on the bottom far right, that's an alpha, that's, and that's the rest of our amen. So what they what do they do? They just kind of continue on the next line. Uh, interesting. So again, so this is Codex Sinaiticus. Uh, again, I just want to show really no punctuation. The only kind of punctuation mark we uh, kind of have is that little mark in the upper right hand corner, um, potential stop right there. Um, but Codex Sinaiticus. This is Codex Alexandrinus, uh, uh, early fifth century. Uh, again, more of the same. Um, just want to kind of, there's Theos again, our Nomina Saka right there. Um, again, the question is, uh, this is why it makes it difficult uh, because when we take a look at, at uh, this in English and when we take a look in, in the Greek manuscripts, it's like, well, what is the punctuation where there is no punctuation? This is where interpretive method, context, so much more kind of comes into play. So again, just want to give kind of a physical representation of uh, what we look at when it comes to these particular manuscripts. Anyways, guys, hope to talk about this more in future posts. Hope you guys uh, leave a comment, you know, if you want to learn or see more of uh, manuscripts and stuff like this or have me talk more about this. This is stuff I, it's candy for me. I love it. Um, but anyways, guys, have a great day. God bless.